Okay. All right, good evening and welcome. It is uh, 6 p.m. Today is uh, Thursday, August 13th. This is the Olentangy Local Schools Board of Education. This is a combined work session and business session. We're going to work through the business session first and then move on to um, the business session where we'll, we'll uh, act on some action items. So with that, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Kern, please call the roll. Mr. Bartz? Here. Mrs. Fiesel? Here. Mr. King? Here. Mr. White? Here. Mr. O'Brien? Here. Please join me and stand in, uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, first item is to approve the agenda. I believe we have a change to the agenda. Mr. Uh, Rafe? Yes, Mr. O'Brien. I'd like to remove item K from the superintendent action items on the business session agenda, the uh, approval of the purchase of materials for the K-5 language arts curriculum um, discovered. I'd like to study that a little further. Okay. So with that, I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Second, please. Second. Okay, any discussion on the agenda? Okay. Mr. Kern, please call the roll. Mrs. Fiesel? Yes. Mr. Bartz? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. So the agenda is approved five to zero. So now we, we'll move into the work session, and the first work session item I think an item that everyone here is interested in. It's the process for the district calendar for 2016-2017 school year. For that, I'll ask uh, Mr. Randy Wright to come up, our Chief of Administrative Services. Of Administrative Services. Please uh, lead us in that discussion, please. Good evening, everyone. Thank Anytime you for uh, allowing me the opportunity to share some of the information that we've compiled uh, for the draft calendar you have before you along with some discussion points and some items for prioritization by the board. Um, briefly a discussion on our, our process that we follow. Uh, in the last several school years we've been two uh, approved calendars out. Um, in the last school year we ran into testing changes so we adjusted how we proposed and approved our calendar and we have been going year to year uh, and so we're in the, uh, the discussion phase for the 16-17 school year. Um, in May of this year, we created an internal draft that was shared with all district staff. And our teaching staff and or classified staff had about 30 days with which they could uh, offer feedback on what was proposed. And they were asked to give that feedback by June 19th of, of this year. Uh, we received feedback uh, in writing by about 30 teachers, which is less than 2%. Uh, once that deadline closed, uh, we did receive additional feedback. Um, we were also in a transition between leadership teams, so discussion of that item got pushed back until uh, Mr. Rafe had his team completely together. Once uh, we began working on this in mid-July, we sought information from local districts. We looked at the patterns of our calendar over the past several years, and we looked at if we continued with the 13-14 uh, and 14-15 model that we've been following, it would essentially continue to move us up as early as a student starting date of August 8th. So as we looked at that, as we talked with other uh, districts and looked at several other factors, we did modify that draft from earlier in the year to what you have before you tonight. And in short, we are proposing um, a starting date on this draft of the third week of August, a student starting date of August 17th, and if we follow the present model, a staff reporting date of August 15th. So as you look before you, there are several variables for you to consider. Uh, won't read all those, but those are items that can weigh on how you decide to <coughs> modify or approve the calendar. Uh, the starting date, you see some historical facts. For the past three school years, it's been the second Wednesday of August. Uh, again, this year it's the second Wednesday, uh, and so that's what we looked at if we progressed that out. Uh, it was the fourth, uh, two, or excuse me, the fourth Wednesday of August in the 12-13 school year, 
uh, when we moved everything up uh, for our, our present model. Um, as you see in the draft, it is the third Tuesday, and it seems to match many of the surrounding districts being the third Wednesday um, of the school year. I, know, I, I just realized now I've got Tuesday on there quite often, and that it you should do. be third Wednesday. He was, he was an English teacher, so <laughs> chastising for uh, and again, we want to, as we have in the past, consider uh, the Delaware districts in the Delaware Area Career Center calendar because we have tried to, uh, because of our shared services with the Career Center, we have been very similar on our calendars the last few years. Uh, another consideration that has been a uh, topic of conversation uh, throughout my time here and, and before is the uh, length of winter break um, on the draft before you. Uh, you see it's slightly shorter than it has been in the past. There's been, there have been two full weeks uh, and three weekends of winter break uh, for several, several years, well over a decade, uh, I think way back to the, at least the 2002-2003 calendar. Uh, but as we look at it with an adjustment on some other things that we are, are looking at, uh, it was very important if you see your second item, uh, it has coincided with the end of the first semester for the past two school years. Uh, this is something that was two years in the planning to achieve this uh, semester end before winter break. And uh, as a former high school administrator, that was something that we, uh, we, we worked on for many years. Uh, and it's uh, very important to our middle school and uh, high school administrative teams. Um, for the draft before you, it is shortened to 13 calendar days for students and 12 calendar days plus a teacher work day for staff. And then the third one, is the end of the school year. Um, again, with the creeping up of the date, just based on how the calendar rolls, um, we have had the most recent calendar that went into the month of June was the 2012-13 school year. Um, students have been done with classes prior to Memorial Day. This would be the third year um, that that calendar has been in effect. We've had a couple of uh, variations depending on how things fell, and we had one year where the teacher work day uh, ended up coming after Memorial Day, so it was a, a long weekend. The students finished on Friday and the teachers came back on the following Tuesday. And then you see in your draft calendar, uh, students and teachers would be completed uh, Memorial Day weekend. So they would uh, wrap up July, or I'm sorry, um, the Thursday prior to that. And there are a couple other things that you may want to consider as you look at these items. Our graduation date, kind of in question if we make uh, an adjustment to this calendar. Uh, we continue to work with the Celeste Center. Uh, we receive feedback from staff and community uh, regarding the timing in the last two years that has uh, coincided with a uh, little event over at Cruz Stadium. And so there's some variables we have to consider with that. Um, we know down the road, depending on when our, our contract sequence approves, we will move to uh, the, the ODE's mandate of hours of instruction versus days, so there could be variables uh, that could come into play with that. And then an academic consideration, and this is something that we've talked about at the administrative level for uh, a few years, uh, is do we continue to worry about semester and final exams considering the, the state of the, the testing that's placed upon us? Um, but that's something that we could uh, continue the conversation. Uh, the final step is at after this meeting, we will have uh, the opportunity and we'll be making live tomorrow a link on our district webpage. And that link will provide information, uh, this draft calendar, and allow community members to provide feedback um, for about 30 days. And then we will come back and share what we're able to compile um, from this community feedback and share that with you at our next opportunity to talk. So at this time, I'll entertain any questions you might have. Uh, one, Mr. Wright, the question on the graduation, so does that, uh, you're projecting that would be on the 21st, depending upon Rock on the Range and all of our fabulous rockers that we share time with down there? Correct. Um, our, our most recent conversation with the Celeste Center is they were instructed that they could no longer schedule events against Rock on the Range. So we would, with this calendar, We'd have to entertain going way, way early, which presents a, a which would be the 14th of May, uh, presents its own issues, and our seniors, what we would do with them after a, a commencement <coughs> ceremony, or look at having it in the uh, Memorial Day weekend once school is complete for everyone. And, and 
So again, on the graduation issue, there's a convergence of three events, right? We graduation was going on. There's a horse show, plus rock on the range, and traffic was just. Correct. It's not the events themselves; it's the traffic mm -hmm. getting, getting in and out Correct. of uh, the area. That's really problematic. Yes. When was the last time school started around Labor Day? Can you remember? Uh, I'm, like this is my ago. 17th year. Not in, not in my time did we ever start in September. And I did look into that. I was only able to find two schools this, for this, this year now. Um, they're in the Dayton area that are starting Labor Day. And I presented the board um, with the spreadsheet of my um, information, uh, the information that I have found. And so far, only one, two, three, four, five school districts in central Ohio have even approved their calendars yet for 2017. So mm -hmm. I think we've got <clears throat> time to do this. I don't want anyone to pay. And when, and when I was making calls doing research, I talked to the mm -hmm. three of the Delaware County superintendents yeah, and, they don't. and they were, they wanted to know how we were going to do it because yeah. they figured we were going to be ahead and, yeah. and follow closely along with what we were thinking. The, Mr. White, the state accountability system started in the early nineties was that was the first ninth grade proficiency tests, which were high school graduation exams. So I've been, it's my 27th year and I've pretty much been, had those ever since. I think most people went to prior to Labor Day to get as many school days in as they could before the testing started. So that's kind of when the people move things back a little bit. Okay. I do have some questions though. Um, on this proposal, do we have a balanced number of days between first semester and second semester? No, and we okay. have not had that for several years um, because of the testing requirements in the second semester and the likelihood of lost instruction due to weather delays or cancellations. We have made uh, the second semester heavier so that we can have an overall balance um, depending on the lost days. Okay, um, and then for the um, third grade reading guarantee, I know that this year our third graders will start testing in November, November 30th. But when do we start giving those kindergartners those pre-tests? Uh, those will start relatively soon. And what we found in the elementary uh, administrators have talked about is it does build some comfort level for the kids to have a little extra time uh, to get into what is their first high stakes yeah. type um, environment. And so building relationships and comfort level, even at that, even at that age, it's been a, uh, a productive opportunity. And then um, just for everybody's information out there, I'm sorry, you don't, I don't, do they, they don't have a copy of this. They do not. Okay, I did some research because I got a lot of input from you all. And um, I just wanted to let people know that out of the 21 Central Ohio school districts plus, Worthington Christian, Powell, Village Academy, and the Catholic schools. Eight of the school districts are starting this week. Seven are starting next week. Five are starting the week of August, and one school district is starting August 31st. And I think Dublin is starting later this year because they have construction. Right. Yes. They're, so they're starting the 26th of August because they had some building construction issues that they wanted to make sure. And Southwestern City, they're starting the latest. That's Grove City. They're starting the latest at August 31st. Um, so as you can see, you know, you've got, oh, and they've got construction too. So you can see we've got, and I sent this to all the board members. The board members have it. And if anybody wants it, just message me. I'll send it to you. Um, we've got eight starting this week that includes us and seven the week after. That's 15 districts out of 21 that are starting, you know, these first two weeks. And then the ones that have already scheduled for next year, one, two, three, four, four of the five that have already scheduled for next year are, would be starting the same week you are proposing. Only one, and that's Westerville would, or no, I'm sorry, that Southwestern City would be starting August 21st. And in conversations with Big Walnut and Delaware, both would be looking at, at us. a next week type of model. Okay. Uh, with Delaware also going to be dealing with construction, so they, they could end up fluctuating that. Yeah, I didn't want people to think we were the outliers. And if you go on the Dayton um, newspaper website, they had a whole list of all the Dayton area schools. And I even looked at Mason, which is Kings Island, because people are like, well, the people around Kings Island, they start after Labor Day. No, they started today. And then I also looked at Sandusky City Schools. That's where Cedar Point is. And they start the 24th. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that we weren't the outlier. And so if we go by this proposed calendar, which I appreciate you giving this to us tonight because we haven't seen it. We aren't the outlier. 
so i think it's a good compromise so, and so just to reiterate on the front end the first two some first two quarters and then in that first semester if i look at this there is no flexibility without pushing one single week to after the christmas <coughs> i'm sorry holiday break i'm an old guy so that's <laughs> what we used to call it when dinosaurs roam the earth. Um, but that holiday break, the only thing to do is to break that up and push that last semester, which is typically exams. So you're going to ask kids to study over the holiday break when they're doing family things to come back and try to do well on those exams. So, mm -hmm. And what um, we found, Mr. Bartz, in the last two years of, and we've actually done this uh, three years, we did it, uh, we ended it early uh, in the 12-13 school year, yeah. and we wrapped up the first semester uh, for and exams were done before break. The change in the energy level um, being refreshed after two weeks of a break, it, it's been night and day at the, at the secondary level uh, in these past two years. So it's something that we feel very strongly about. And while administrators, we're not very concerned about the start day or the end day, that would be the one thing that we, we have uh, collected enough information about that we feel mm -hmm. very strongly about. Thank you. And then I also got a lot of concern because people said, well, start sports later. Can you address that at the high school level, please? Um, yeah, OHSAA, they set the opening day for beginning of sports practice, and that has typically been August 1st. Uh, <clears throat> our sports teams can do camp. Uh, those things, have, they're in control. But one of the things that we have realized with this earlier calendar is because of August 1st deadline getting closer and closer to the start of our school year, our athletic teams get a little more of a disadvantage uh, because they don't have the ability to acclimate longer, have more two-a-days practices or more scrimmages without a school day um, going on as well. Uh, again, several of the opponents will be not starting school till next week, week after, and, and get a, a week and a half of, of additional practice in that regard. Um, but it has been something that we have no flexibility over. This, the, uh, the state used to adjust it accordingly, but in the last three years, it's been August 1st for every sport each year. So we know that it, trying to get away from that will be important as well. Yeah, because I know girls golf, we already had four matches yes. for varsity golf, yeah. and I'm sure the boys are tennis too. the same. Yeah. yeah, tennis was leaving the other morning when we were coming to Walking convocation. Walking they were getting on the buses. Mm -hmm. okay, any other questions on that? And then, um, I'm sorry, I have a whole, I have several different things. I have 15 issues here that people have brought up to my attention. Um, the professional days, are they staying the same in this? We had three this year. Yes. Are they staying the same in this uh, year? Yes, because uh, the professional development model is part of a negotiated agreement, and the three days <clears throat> are, are not set by the contract, but we have not altered those um, for the 16-17 calendar. Well, and the alternative would be if we didn't do full day professional development days would be go to go back to the six yeah. two hour late starts. Yeah. But we heard loud and clear from our community that they didn't like those. We also didn't feel they were as productive from a professional development standpoint. So we we like the three day model. We do we do load two in the first semester because if the professional development we're using is going to have an impact during this school year, we want to do the majority of it in the first semester. And then also, um, I went on and looked at the 2016 AP study or the AP test days, and the AP tests start May 1st, and then they run until like May 14th. Yes. Is, would that be? Do you assume that would be the same for this school yeah, year? Yeah. Uh, college board sets those dates, and it's always the first two full weeks of May, um, and so we've we've butted up against commencement the last two school years, mm -hmm. and for this coming school year will be in the, in the same category. The proposed calendar gets a little bit of more flexibility if there are things needing to be done after AP testing. Um, one of the things we've realized over time for our students who take AP, and that is several thousand yeah. of our high school students, um, they are essentially done once the oh, AP yeah. test is complete. They do not have final exams for right. us. Their, their year is gearing up towards the uh, the AP test in those those two weeks mm -hmm. um, and then for the those students who are seniors November 1st tends to be the deadline to apply for honors programs in Ohio yes. and December 1st tends to be the deadline to apply early decision 
So I know a lot of those kids want to get in and get their essays written because they're English teachers. A lot of that is done. And I know Krista knows this, having gone through it. They, in their English class senior year, that's what they're working on first semester. And yes. so they have to have time to get those essay, essays in. OK, I think I've. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've addressed the issues that I have heard. All right, so let, let me recap where I think we are. Yes. Okay. So uh, there's a process that we have in place to approve the calendar. That process starts with issuing a draft to the uh, OTA, yep. mm -hmm. which is required by the contract. That was issued, and that had the August 10th start date mm -hmm. for students and August 8th start date for staff. We, uh, we've got some, let's say, immediate and emotional feedback on that, both from some of the staff as well as the community. I know there's a change.org petition with 667 signatures on it uh, asking us to reconsider the calendar. What we presented tonight was uh, an adjustment to that original draft that has the 16-17 <coughs> school year starting on the 17th and the staff coming on the 15th. So we will now post that to the website with a link to get additional community feedback for about a 30-day period. And then we'll come back <coughs> in the uh, late September or early October board meeting in a, in a business session to officially approve whatever final calendar will be presented. But right now, the proposal is the 17th as the start date, which is in the third Wednesday of August of 2016. Which, right. Just to clarify that, we would have followed that process regardless of what happened. And we, we, uh, yeah, the 30-day 30, 30 30 period is a yep. new Ohio law that was recently passed in the last um, like two years. Budget. It just, so, we, yeah, right. in a budget bill. So I just want to make sure people understood the process of administration develops, staff comments, public comments, and then the board votes. Right. And that's the process that we'll be following. Um, okay. Any other Questions, comments, or discussions on the calendar? So you want all input through through the website? And Mr. Bryan, if I might, just uh, the link tomorrow will be in top news. There will be a calendar icon that community members can click on that link in the top news um, section of our webpage. The Take them right to, yes. Yes. Right to uh, the draft and uh, box where they can submit uh, feedback, and we will be collecting that over the next 30 days. Terrific. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, thank you. Okay, the uh, next item is actually a twofer, uh, departmental updates. So first up is uh, Krista Davis, the new Director of Communications. Krista, please join us. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. And hello, everyone. <coughs> It is definitely an honor for me to be here tonight um, as your new Director of Communications. I know annually about this time of year you have an update from this department about work that's going on and um, planned work for the upcoming year. But because I'm new to the position um, just in the past few weeks, I thought I would just share a little bit about my background, the department, and then my vision for the position in the upcoming year. So for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm a longtime OLNTNG person. I just was sharing with Mr. Wright, I, taught, I started here in 1992 at OLNTNG Elementary as a fourth grade teacher. I taught for 10 years and then stepped away from teaching. I am a parent of one 2015 graduate who leaves for college in a few hours. And then, so I won't cry. Um, and then an up upcoming senior graduating this um, coming May in 2016. So a longtime district resident and involved community member with the Education Foundation, the Communications Committee, and OLNTNG for Kids. Um, other components in my life outside of teaching and my um, community involvement have really lent themselves perfectly to this communications role. And then for those of you who don't know, I filled in for our former director of communications a few years ago um, when she took a maternity leave and then have continued in special projects with the district. Um, so again, I'm thrilled to be here. 
just a little bit um, on our department right now. Um, as you know, our structure includes three members, the director, the public information coordinator, which is Devin Emelt, and then Carrie Ahmed, our administrative assistant. We also have a superintendent's committee, the communications committee, that provides advice and feedback to the department. That um, committee has been um, kind of quiet for the past six to 12 months, and we're going to be reinvigorating that in the um, fall here. Uh, probably one of the biggest projects the department has been working on, and I will give all the credit to Devin for um, executing on the website, the brand new website, which launched, launched July 29th. Um, hopefully you've all navigated through it and are finding your way um, to the different things that are available there. And as Mr. Wright mentioned, the calendar icon con under top news tomorrow will have the ability to give the feedback. So it's very easy to use, hopefully very easy to see and find things. Um, we also sent out a newsletter at the end of July to all in the mailbox bag drop thing um, for everybody to get their back to school schedules and things like that. Um, and then finally, I'd like to comment um, one thing that I'm really excited about in the coming year is the elevation of the area of communications in the school district simply by Mr. Rafe's suggestion and implementation of moving communications to be a direct report to the superintendent and being part of the district leadership team. I feel that that is critical to successful communications with the district, so I'm really pleased to be part of that. And then I just want to share a few words on my vision for communications for the district. And that is really to, you, to be strategic in all of our communications, to be proactive and intentional in our messaging. And I think in years past, it's been you know, kind of so much work going on that it's easy to be reactive and not proactive. And I'd really like to turn that tide to be proactive in sharing information with all of our constituents. So that be students and parents, staff, you as the board, the community, local um, public safety officials, township, city agencies, et cetera. Um, and then through all means of communication, web, our new website, social media, um, our phone calls, our um, emails uh, and um, eye contact messages, and um, any which way that we can reach all of our constituencies. I'd also like to tighten up our brand. Um, we have a really great brand that was, is kind of loosey-goosey right now, and I'd like to tighten that up, um, provide a consistent brand standard in all of our materials and messages. Um, one thing that our leadership team, um, and following with Mr. Rafe, it feels that it's very important is to continue to articulate our mission, living our mission, and what that means. And then I believe in all of our communications, we'll continue to remind people what does that actually mean? How can we live our mission um, in facilitating maximum learning for all students? And then with that, of course, comes a vision that includes high expectations for all of us that quality experiences and communications about our academics and the extracurriculars and everything that our our community and our students participate in and then with that any strategic thoughts plans goals objectives strategies and tactics need to be implemented um, all of them through communication so that everyone knows what we're trying to accomplish. Um, and so I think that is one of the primary jobs of that proactive strategic communications piece and that I hope to be able to deliver. And really, I think at the end of the day, it's very a very simple thing. We have a great story to tell here in Olin Tangi. Um, and we need to share that story and that message to our, all of our audiences and remind them of all the great things that everyone is doing here. Um, that's really exciting to me. Um, we, have, we just have a great place here and I think um, great students, staff, community, families that we will be able to share the story with and about. So that's just a snapshot of um, what I'm hoping to execute in the upcoming year and next year be able to report to you some more of our deliverables and action plans as we move forward. So I'll answer any, any questions uh, you might have. Questions or comments from Davis? No, I think it's very exciting that you're able to mm -hmm. work out your schedule with the national sorority and, and be able to be involved with Olatangi. Thank you.
I think it would be important. You know, for us to get some stability in that role. Yes. Right, we've had a, you know, been here five years, I think this is our fourth communications mm -hmm. person. Um, so I think getting some stability, elevating it at the right level, getting on the leadership team, I think is important. So it's good, looking forward to it. Yes. It's great. It, and it's really great to have somebody here who knows Olin TNG. I think yes. that's a huge benefit. Okay, welcome. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with your son. Yeah. You. Don't get us started, Thank right, you. Krista? Don't get us started. Next up is Mr. Gordon. Uh, Jeff is going to walk us through the uh, capital improvement project of the summer. You should have, let's say, getting another copy of the uh, improvements. Mr. Rafe sent it out with his superintendent's report. And um, it's about $1.1 million of investments. So go ahead, Jeff. Yes. Uh, there's not a department that's happier to be in school than we are and wrap up some of these projects. It's been a, uh, a hectic summer, and as we continue to uh, do more and more, our maintenance staff uh, does a great job of keeping up and doing more and more of that work to uh, try to save us, save us money and, and get the buildings ready. So we're happy that first day of school when the principals are dealing with other things and they're not calling offices and doing that. So uh, as you see here is a, just a quick summary that I provided Mr. Rafe regarding uh, the permanent improvement uh, items that we discussed in December on our list of how we would spend that budgeted 1.1 million. Uh, just a, a quick summary, uh, a large portion of that was uh, roof replacement Arrowhead Elementary School. And just as a recap, that roof, um, while it is a couple years, mm -hmm. had been a couple years younger than a, a Wyandotte Run or a um, Alum Creek, it is out in an open field. It was getting a lot of wind and a lot of damage, so we were doing a lot of replacements and shingle repair and then walking on it causing more. So that one kind of jumped ahead of a couple other buildings that might have been a couple years older. So that was the, the reason for Arrowhead moving up. Uh, the asphalt improvements, uh, we've talked about several times here uh, in the meetings. Additional on these asphalt improvements that we didn't discuss in the fall was um, after reviewing the traffic pattern at ONTNG High School, we expanded the bus loop in the back of the building and were able to move buses back there this fall to separate the bus traffic from the student pair traffic. And that seems to have really cleared up uh, some, some issues we're getting there as we continue to get more and more students in the building. So that was an addition that we didn't discuss in the fall. Uh, security camera updates. We were able to update uh, a good portion of our uh, the start on our security cameras. And if you remember, we received a grant for 115000 to kick that off. And as part of that grant, uh, the way we designed it was to put head end in every building uh, to cover the front door, which is the requirement of the grant, but have that where it could be scaled up as we added cameras. So we were able to um, uh, complete the change out of a camera in an elementary school. Uh, we've added significant number of cameras to our two oldest buildings, being Shanahan, where it's the older systems and, and didn't have as many cameras, as well as Olentang High School. And the, the reason for changing out some of the TNG high schools, we added some and changing them out is there are a lot of parts and cameras there we can use for some of our other older systems as we move forward because some of those parts are becoming hard to find. So as we continue to change out, we also have a need for uh, parts. So we were able to add $100,000 from our PI budget to the grant of 115 and uh, get a start on, on changing out those security cameras. Uh, we had several uh, security imp improvements around the district, uh, and most of that was just um, repairs you know we had fire panels we had to replace or expand uh, there were significant dollars as well as uh, door hard door hardware replacements for uh, doors that may be uh, handicap accessibility or access security access doors where we had to make upgrades or changes again a lot of that due to age and, and expansion of the buildings and how we're using the buildings uh, concrete improvements uh, district-wide um, those aren't quite complete. We have a set of steps to add at ONTNG High School. Again, students are crossing the road from uh, behind the stadium in the morning, and uh, we're putting a set of steps to come down the hill. Right now, they have to walk around or come down the hill. So that's a, the last part of that to complete. Um, the rest uh, was exterior, just general building repairs. We've repaired siding and roofing, gutters, and uh, then another at the very bottom, $15,000 of painting and we had stopped doing much painting the last couple of years because of the cost and we had used outside contractors so we actually were able to put together a team of college students this year to do the painting for us and saved us uh, significant dollars in, in doing that so uh, one area we received a quote to do was about uh, eight thousand dollars and we tracked the number of hours the the college students worked on it and the amount of paint that they used for that and we were able to do that area just that one area for about four thousand so it was a significant, uh, we got a significant amount of painting done. Concentrate on the elementaries this year, try to do the main hall where you get the most traffic, the kids touching the walls, feet on the walls, 
and then next year our hope is to continue that and, and hit the main halls of the middle and high schools. So again, always looking for ways to try to do that more cost effectively and, mm -hmm. and stretch our uh, PI yeah, dollars out. Uh, I believe that is, oh, I'm sorry, we added 150 new lockers uh, to accommodate student growth at ONTNG High School, as well as another project that we didn't have on the board that came up uh, in June was we received a grant from the Columbus Foundation for the STEM program at Shanahan. Yeah. So we're able to renovate um, the art room, or I'm sorry, what had been the old kitchen on the, the east end of the building into an art room where they were able to move the general art class down there and then uh, we added a garage door to the back of what will be the STEM room, which incidentally was the old uh, industrial arts class for the high school. So we, we started yeah. looking at how we were going to get the equipment through the door and realized there had already been a garage door there. So we were able to, to take the uh, wall that had been put up down and, and put another garage door up. So that is ready to go. And I believe you have a purchase for furnishing that room on the agenda tonight, mm -hmm. as well as uh, other equipment that they're looking at. So that was another project kind of came up uh, there in June and we were able to get done and, and get the kids down in, in the new art room. Entertain any questions at this time? Thanks, Mr. Gordon. Thanks, Jeff. Okay. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Okay, that concludes the work session. We'll now transition into the business <coughs> session. And the uh, first item is the board president's report. Um, I was going to spend a minute on the calendar, but I think we covered that. I did want to spend a minute on um, growth and uh, a fourth high school. I know I've received a number of texts, calls, messages, et cetera, inquiring about where are we relative to this uh, fourth high school issue. And I think it's important just to, to get out there kind of where are where we are. Um, and, you know, we're continuing to develop strategies to deal with growth. I know numbers are still moving around as we speak today, but we're still sitting in the 700 to 800 range in terms of new students this year that we didn't have last year. Um, and uh, kind of where we are is the fourth high school is one of several options under consideration uh, relative to schedule, capacity assessment, incremental space, et cetera, that we'll be spending time on on Tuesday. So we have a board retreat on Tuesday, starts at 5.30. Um, and I know Dave, Mr. King, Mr. Bartz, Ms. Wagner Fiesel has spent a fair amount of time uh, with the facilities committee it's, it's, that has spent a significant amount of time yep. on this issue that will continue to move this issue forward as we evaluate what's the best course forward. We'll be looking for additional um, community input as well. So nothing's been decided, just a lot of evaluation uh, options under consideration. And we'll continue um, to really vet those options and make sure there's good visibility and transparency uh, into that process. Um, but nothing, you know, no, nothing's been decided, but certainly it's, it's a challenge that you know, we've talked about for a long time in terms of how do we deal with growth and how the growth is coming and where we think it's coming in terms of elementary, middle, high. And we know we're pretty good at the elementary. It's really how do we deal with challenges at middle and high. And, and even not just um, the growth itself, but, the, but where the growth is coming geographically, right? Which side of the district, which schools, et cetera. So expect a fair amount more on that topic. But I just want to make sure it's clear that, um, you know, a lot of debate, a lot of discussion yet, yet to be had uh, on that issue. So, can I add that to your? There's, there's also been no decisions made on attendance lines. That's correct. We have created an ABC right. committee to study, to create guidelines, and to mm -hmm. look at some sore spots or problem areas. But there have been no dis no decisions on uh, any changes to attendance boundaries either. I know that that um, topic is out there as well. So thank you for that. In that rumor mill. Yes. Churning. Thank you. All right, superintendent's report, Mr. Rafe, with your inaugural superintendent's <clears throat> report. No, thank you very much. Okay, Devin, what'd you say I have to do? Just turn it on the side. Oh. All right. Well, thank you. I, I'd like to think that you guys all came out to just hear my superintendent's report. It's my first <laughs> time, and I uh, told the teachers the other day, I, I got to do the same thing, Mr. Mr. O'Brien. I got to check my resting heart rate. Oh, 73. You guys don't make me nearly as nervous as talking to that 1,200, te 1200 <laughs> teachers at a time. So thank you uh, for um, this opportunity again. Uh, starting off with good things, I really liked how Dr. Lucas did his superintendent report. So I'm just going to copy it as being old, old football coaches. When we have a good idea, we steal it. But so far, so good. Um, 
I would say this has been a, another smooth opening. We always try to quantify the smoothest opening ever, the least problems ever, I don't know. Um, there's always a few bumps in the road, but overall, I think we had a very good start to the school year. I was in, uh, I've been in 11 buildings so far in two days. Um, members of our leadership team have been out in uh, all over the place and I'm getting nothing but positive reports, positive feedback. Kids seem you know, on, uh, very happy to be back and, and, and um, so far, so far so good. Transportation did a, did a great job. Um, I tell you, if, if we have, if you ever want to watch a, a show in action, you need to see our transportation dispatchers on the first day of school as they're trying to get all the buses in and make sure um, all the kids are home safely and, and listening to how that's going. It is a true work of art. I had the opportunity to address the bus driver staff, the food service staff, the clerical staff, and then at convocation on Tuesday, all of the um, all of the secondary and elementary staffs, and, and uh, I feel really, really proud of the positive energy I feel with the transition, with my transition. I'm so honored to be, to have the opportunity to serve as superintendent, but also even more proud of the positive feedback I've gotten on the, on the leadership team in the transition and the new building leadership that we have uh, in place. Uh, it's been, just been overwhelmingly positive. So we'll just continue to work hard to meet the expectations of the community and, and meet the challenge of the district mission. So um, at the convocation, uh, we had the convocation, we also had a vendor fair. We announced the two uh, employees of the year. Um, our teacher of the year was Jennifer Lawrence Kent from Tyler Run Elementary School. Um, and as you know, Jennifer passed away uh, in the spring. Her husband and her aunt, who was a former teacher, were there to accept on her behalf. It was very emotional, uh, very emotional to, to have that happen. And then Ann Shuren was the classified employee of the year, and she is a long time uh, classified aide at Wyandotte Run, and she does a great, great job of uh, being a front office aide there at Wyandotte. So very, very deserving. We also had the Liberty Band uh, perform. You see a little picture there on your right. The Liberty Band did a great job performing kick us off at the, at the convocation. We had 70 vendors at the vendor fair, uh, 75 vendors at the vendor fair. Um, it's been a very positive opportunity for community vendors to get in front of our staff and uh, meet and greet and, and show, um, show off their businesses. So that's been a very positive uh, experience. Uh, we also launched a STEM program at, at Olentangy Academy. Uh, that had a very smooth opening. We had 85 kids attend an open house in late July. And uh, they, I got a chance to be there and uh, see that in action. Um, again, just an incredible amount of positive energy. So we're hopeful that that, that will continue to expand. Um, which again, to, to go back to what Mr. O'Brien said, that's one of the things we're, one of the options we're looking at is an alternative program to see if we can create programs that will draw kids out of our high school to help with capacity issues. Um, as Krista indicated, we launched our new website. So far this week, we have 37,450 visits to the website, um, which has been a very positive. You know, like in any transition, there's been some minor minor bumps in that. It's a little bit difficult to, to uh, until you get used to it. I don't think any one website will always think intuitively for everybody, but once you get past it, you find your way and you use it once or twice, it, it, it does, it's very smooth and, and it's been, uh, I think it's much easier to navigate and the presentation of the information is better. So uh, we had a nice announcement at the uh, Orange High School, uh, at the end of band camp, Orange High School's marching band got invited to perform at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. They actually made a huge tunnel with the band and the Chick-fil-A cows were there to <laughs> present them with their invitation. So that was a <laughs> pretty exciting, pretty exciting for the kids at Orange High. That will happen not this, uh, this winter, but the following winter. And at that time, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl will one, be one of the national semifinal games. So that'd be a great opportunity for them. And then also on your, um, on the board agenda for approval tonight as a donation for the, or the purchase of the equipment to um, build the, or to furnish the fab lab at Shanahan Middle School. And that was all privately uh, funded through an anonymous donation from the Columbus Foundation. So that is uh, just a great, um, Mr. McDaniel had applied for a grant and uh, through the straight A fund, it got denied. And there are some people at the Columbus Foundation who watched that, thought it was worthy of being funded. So they stepped up and anonymously 
uh, donated one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And the, the foundation has been very good to Olentangy, right? Mm -hmm. They picked up um, the turf, mm -hmm. which is a significant donation. Now this. Mm -hmm. is, it's a great resource. It's, just, it's, it's, it's nice to know people are watching what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, on the board agenda for your approval, uh, superintendent action items are the bus routes and stops for this school year, which is an annual exercise for us. There's also um, our renewal of our uh, Works International uh, contract, which is, a, uh, is our public school works. It's, a, it's the software we use for training and student bullying and safety reporting and, and all of those, those functions. Uh, you also have a purchase for uh, road salt. We provided you uh, um, information on that in the last in, in your agenda update. Um, I'm thankful Mr. Gordon is watching those salt prices, and uh, we got in on a, a good price before the before the rush. We're ahead of the curve, so it's a good job by Jeff and his department being ahead of that. Um, there's uh, the easements for the just an adjustment to the Sawmill, Sawmill Parkway extension for the county commissioners uh, that's been previously discussed. And then, and then the furnishings for the Fab Lab, as I previously mentioned. So at uh, this time, I will take any questions. Okay, do we have any questions for Mr. Ray? Mm -hmm. Comments? No? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, we're now at uh, public participation session number one for general comments. I know we have uh, several. Yes. So Mr. Kerr, you want to? Yeah, we have four here this okay. evening, so I'm just on. Call them up in order here, one at a time. Uh, Shira Icorn for calendar change. Oh, yeah, so uh, guidelines for uh, public participation is uh, five minutes per speaker, 30 minutes for the session. Please state your name and address for the record as you begin. Thank you. Hi, my name is Shira Icorn. I reside at 161 Tiller Drive. I appreciate you uh, letting me come up here and speak. I can't follow directions, which really was use the link, but I feel since I am representing a large group that um, I will take at least a few minutes and address this. Um, after you know the last, uh, since the calendar has changed, there's been a lot of the parents talking and with their neighbors and with their friends, um, and we are not fond of the new calendar. So Michelle Williams decided to take it upon herself to start a group and just see how many of us felt that way. Well. Within this week, less than seven days, there's 1,350 people um, that are participating on the group. Now, take out a percentage of those that actually, you know, are fond of it and are just interested in seeing that. So you'd have to play the percentages that way. There's also two separate different uh, petitions going on that have over 700 people. So one thing I do want to say is I'm sure all of you are extremely frustrated that the fact of when you're dealing with funding issues and all the testing issues that you're dealing with, that if you want to see us get in a frenzy, deal with the calendar. However, I hope that you see this as a wonderful opportunity of you have a captive audience now and that we are going to see what doing by being organized in our powers and numbers, how we can make a difference and have our local officials hear us, what we could do to help you as well with the state. Um, so I think we could build on this momentum. So I, th I think you should look at this as a positive. I also believe that no matter what side you are on this debate, that we all want what is best for our children. The wonderful thing about being in the Olentangy school system is that the parents are very active and they're always seeking ways to make sure that they set their children up for success and push them um, to look for opportunities. Um, we feel that not only do we expect our children to strive academically, but we also want them to be well-rounded human beings. And that's, you know, with leadership skills, um, with learning how to, you know, play on a team, um, many different ways of making that well-rounded individual. And I know that's your um, goal as well. We feel with the current summer, um, or the trend that it's going, it is, it is hurting that um, for many reasons. Um, one is, there's a culture that you have among the Olentangy, and I think a lot of the surrounding areas, Dublin, Worthington, all of them, um, that these active kids are in many different activities. And it's not just high school sports. I mean, even looking at little league sports or um, performing arts where they go to dance competitions, many of these do go in well into June. Then when you turn around and you talk about the fall sports that begin or fall activities, they do start in August. and so. You're looking at a very small range now that you're putting us into. And we want to be able to have our kids experience many things during the summer. I think also, too, by letting us out in May, the summer camps and everything aren't in full swing. So it's kind of dead time with that when you're talking about the kids that they don't have activities, that there really isn't summer camps going on. Also, too, 
from a weather perspective. It's 12 degrees on an average warmer in August than it is in May. And the kids do want to have pool time. Not that we're seeking for that one more pool time, but if you're looking at it overall, there's a significant loss there during pool time. The weather did not help this year, and I think everyone can agree on it. It rained, it rained, it rained. So it was a perfect storm of parents being upset and then starting hearing the rumors of a single digit start date, mm -hmm. which really was the parent start date. Um, I also think that, um, just look over here. Look, excuse me, looking at my notes. Um, that when you're looking at making these decisions, it's clear that you guys are taking in a lot of things into consideration. The gentleman that stood up here today talked about AP classes, mm -hmm. talked about having everything done before um, you go to holiday break. All of those things we truly appreciate, and we know that we're not the outlier, that everyone is starting to shift to a little bit earlier of a start, but we're not the outliers either in the fact of how the parent reaction. Michelle will tell you since she started this, she's been contacted from people from Dublin, from Worthington, other p parents across the board in Ohio are feeling this way. And you will look across the nation, many states um, have, are all over the place. And I don't think, you know, those kids are suffering academic wise going into colleges. So I'm hoping that this is actually not just stopped here, but it moves. So I appreciate that all the, already that you guys are looking at compromising and looking at the August 17th date. Um, I will say that we would, we understand that after Labor Day is a pretty big ask and that's pretty outdated. I think ideally we were hoping for August 24th and that's what I would be here to say, can we relook at that calendar? I know the problem with doing August 24th, he made it clear we'd be pushing those, um, the testing for the holidays, um, but that is my ask today, is that when you look at it, please put it for August 24th. And I'm right at four minutes and 52 seconds, so I will stop. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just for one clarification, um, I hope that I heard this right from Mr. Wright, is that if you're looking at state testing, there could be a change in exams. So if we can't get a change in this calendar, you know, we might be able to with the next. So I'm, I'm hoping that I heard that correctly. So that will be taken into consideration. Okay, okay next. I, I, I apologize if I don't, don't say this right. Bob, is it Leach? Yep. Thank you guys again for having all this. Uh, it's Bob Leach at 1155 Crayfish Court. Um, I don't want to reiterate a lot of the same things um, that, that you had said. I think you articulated it very well. We, I think, just feel that there was a natural trend that was going earlier and earlier. Um, you know, and I appreciate the, the new communication lead. I think that's going to help a lot is I think the parents didn't feel they were involved in that process, that it was just happening and we had no say about it. And the trend of things being centered around testing, obviously, is a hot button issue. And it just kind of was a perfect storm with that. And again, with rumors of the 8th, you know, or, or even the 10th. I know when my son started in uh, 2012, it was the, the 22nd. You know, that's already, you know, 10 days. Uh, we're already 10 days shorter than that this year. So I think uh, it, certainly the communication, I appreciate that you guys are even considering, you know, having talking about the 17th and the 24th. Obviously, there's a ton of issues. And we just want to make sure that we are involved in that process, that there is that communication, that you know, that link will be up on the site tomorrow, that people can put the input in. Um, there's no one perfect solution. You can't make every single parent happy. We all realize that. Everyone has their own needs. And I think that's the one thing is that we do, that, that you articulated very well, is that we do strive and, and push our kids very hard academically. But we do want them to be well-rounded. Mm -hmm. and, and part of that is having that time you know, in the summers to be out at, at eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. I know my son, uh, you know, I pick him up, we eat dinner, it's seven o'clock. If he has homework, you know, it's time to wash up and get ready for bed. And, and you know, you got the best days of the year out there and, and they're being wasted, you know. So, um, you know, I, I just, I, I appreciate the communication, all the things that you had, Mr. Wright, had put in uh, that go into that decision making. I think that's important for everybody in the district to understand that it's just not an arbitrary date. Um, so we just keep on, uh, keep on that communication and we'll keep hopefully uh, engaging and, and we'll, we'll spread the word as far as the, the link for tomorrow. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can keep that just as long as our, I think as parents, we just wanna make sure that trend doesn't keep going where it becomes mm -hmm. then 
three years from now it's the second right. and now we're then we're talking July and mm -hmm. I think that's we get into a slippery slope and I think parents really freaked out that holy cow this is just going to be the state of the way things are and, and we want to make sure that we were heard so we appreciate the uh, the opportunity mm -hmm. right, thank you and I, yep. I hope you do feel like you were heard <laughs> uh, next person is Ira Shakira I hope I said that right. I'm sorry, but you're fine. <laughs> I've been called worse. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, good evening, uh, President O'Brien. Name and address for the record, please. I'm sorry. Name and address for the record. Oh, please. Uh, my name is Ira Shakari. I'm at 4198 Broadway, Dublin, and if I lived a couple of blocks north, we would have been a part of this district. Mm -hmm. okay. But my son has a lot of friends who go to the system, okay? Uh, three years ago, the, the district previous director of special education, Mr. Mr. Chris Andres, after receiving a proposal from us for uh, document management services, he requested our competitor to resubmit a, another proposal with the alternative price so essentially make it more attractive than our proposal and unfortunately neither him neither the district representative who signed it they look at the rest of the proposal and you, are, you don't have to take my word for it here's a copy of it for you and for your board minutes uh, that's a submitted accepted proposal and it's full of errors including on the first page and uh, you're all accomplished people, business people. I promise you, if somebody gives you the proposal like that, you wouldn't hire them for a minute. When they use a different name than your name and the introduction letter. But, however, Mr. Andres decided to essentially trust the district into student information to this vendor. Um, we had a meeting and so forth and both by him and Dr. Lucas. In verbal and written, we were promised that, okay, at the end of this contract, this project is going to go out and ask for proposals again. And it was such that until July 1st, and I think that's the time Mr. Andres unfortunately moved to our district, he sent me an email that said, oh no, he decided not to go. But the concern is uh, the proposal violates Ohio retention laws, violates o uh, federal HIPAA laws, and violates uh, FERPA uh, laws, which is a federal student, um, let me read it, Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. And it's not my opinion. You can ask anybody who knows about these laws, and they can tell you the same thing. Uh, as an example, we have asked several times uh, from Sanders, do you know where these documents are going? No answer. The proposal doesn't have any address. So essentially, the student information is given to a vendor who takes them away, and nobody knows where they go. As I said, for two years we waited it, and I understand the original pairs is out, but I'm hoping, I was hoping the district at least would look at a different solution, see what it is. And also I want to mention that the district, greatly they have an e-form solution for student information that I believe it costs about $10,000 a year. Our solution would have provided that e-form and district wouldn't have to spend that $10,000. So I'm here to ask you, the contract is supposed to end August 20th. And that's why I'm here. I'm asking you to look at different solutions. And I tell you this, before you dismiss us, okay, loser vendor, <clears throat> if you like to, we will withdraw and we will help the district to choose the right solution. Because this is about 
protecting the student information. At this day and age of stolen identity and so forth, I think the district should take all the necessary steps to accomplish that. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, no, I mean, this is the first we've heard of this issue. I'd refer to uh, Mr. Rafe, Mr. Kern, to maybe come back at our next possible meeting and give us your uh, thoughts on the issue. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the last uh, this evening is Tanya Harris, uh, School Start Times. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm back. <laughs> yeah. Um, we know. We're sorry. Right. We have so Tanya. Much love and <laughs> have a lot of I know. Stuff. I know. I know. Um, Tanya Harris, 6817 Golden Way. Um, just really quickly, and I have some uh, support this time. I have some concerned parents in the back yeah. who are. I think our crowd is growing a little bit, but um, I just would like to reintroduce the issue of middle school and high school start times, um, basically pushing them back a little bit. Um, and you've heard me speak and some others speak about um, reasoning, and I think there was some agreement there um, with Dr. Lucas on maybe the need of uh, maybe teenagers, you know, having more sleep and that type. Well. Now my daughter just started yesterday at middle school and <laughs> looking at her this morning I'm like I have to revisit this so she's a uh, she was very tired this morning but I'm sure she'll you know get used to the times but I would like to maybe have some comments or thoughts from the board on where we could go from here setting aside the calendar issue at this point well yeah and, and so I'll, I'll jump in a little bit so there was some also studies published this week I think CDC came out with another yes report on start time so I think as a board we should probably think through and, and talk about what options are available today um, what would we consider and then maybe get some uh, input from the community so I think we should probably tee that up I think we can do it that. similarly to the calendar the calendar mm -hmm. similar issue yeah okay mm -hmm. um, yeah and we realized we had discussed this yeah at Early last year, year yes. last school school yes. year and then all of a sudden it, we had like issues exploding everywhere right and right. Apologize, it didn't because we we do want to look at it and see what can be worked out. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so thanks we'll, for sticking with us. Okay, thank you. So for maybe your questions for Mr. Rafe. So who would who would own this then? To, so we yeah. can help Tanya and the parents. Who's going to own getting this information or doing that type of I thing? I think I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm watching to see which of the chiefs is going to look at his shoes. <laughs> so so Mr. Wright, uh, let the record show that Mr. Wright has raised his hand. Um, Thank you, Mr. But, but Wright. I do agree with Julie. We did have a lot on our plate with the administration, yes. obviously, and, and several mm -hmm. other issues, which we weren't expecting, which really consumed our time. And, and, and um, I'd like to tell you that we all only have hours in every week to, to address issues like this but yes if mr wright um knowing mr wright for a long time i believe he's the right guy to take the lead on that well, and, and honestly mr barts it'd be a co co-joined effort because there's an yeah because we do want to with, with yeah. transportation and so our, right. our whole leadership team will that would be will, great will i think, on the I think plan we though. owe that and response I, I think dublin moved their times this year and they that might be a good school to look at you know because they're Could similar we know what they moved that to so, does anyone know i think they moved everybody back they did move back uh, two years ago they moved back i think 9.05 was the middle school start time, if I'm not mistaken, and I think they moved it, I think that was a little too late, but I think mm -hmm. they're still way later than us. High school, because we're 7.20, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're 7.20. So, well, we'll find that. That'll be part of, I'm sure, Mr. Wright's in-depth review process. And I have had conversation with the Dublin, um, actually, the person who was in charge of the, the Mr. Wright for Dublin, <laughs> and he was saying, he was telling me that it's worked out very well, so... Um, okay. And he'd be happy to talk to anybody that would, you know, want to. He'd want to work with. So, all right. Thank you very much thank for you, your time. Thank you. Thank right. Thanks for, thanks being for patience. Yeah. So none on action items either then. Okay. On action items. All right, Mr. Rafe, would you want to present your uh, superintendent action items? Do you have some call-outs? Uh, A2, A5, and A6. So A2, five, and six. Is that what you said? Okay. So would you like those presented, we'll present those first? Yeah, present and then just do it all else. So I'd like to present superintendent action items A2, 
A5 and A6 for approval. Okay, so A2 is the uh, new teacher academy stipend. Mm -hmm. A5 is the supplemental employment. And A6 is the uh, pupil activity supervisor employment. So I get a motion to? Yeah, motion to accept as requested. Okay. So second. moved. I guess that's a second. That's a second. Oh, it's a second. Okay. Yes. I'm looking at the double See. start times. Made a motion okay. second. Any discussion? Right, see none. Call the roll, please. Mr. Bartz? Yes. Mrs. Fiesel? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mr. White? No. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. So those items pass four to one. I'm going to present the and rest then present room. superintendent action oh. items. With the whole list, a everything rest. that's left, everything all, that's remaining, all else, all, all all other superintendent action Keep items. Keep in mind that K was removed. And K was removed. Yes. Okay. So can I have a motion, please? I'll move. Second. second. Any discussion on the remaining items? No. Please call the roll. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Bartz. Yes. Mrs. Fiesel. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes, those items passed unanimously. I'll now uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. And again, uh, our next meeting is Tuesday the 18th, 18th at 5.30 here. It'll be a, a work session or our board retreat. Although, it, is it? We're voting. Business and. Business oh, sorry, it's, it's another combined uh, work business session, business session. So we will be taking action items. It starts at 5.30. It starts at 5.30, .30. a little early, uh, earlier than usual. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Uh, second, please. Second. Any discussion? Yes. In Dublin, their school, high school starts at 7.55. Okay. 7.55. Okay. And everyone laughed so they didn't hear that. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's on the record. Middle school's at 8.28. So there you go. Okay. Okay. About a half hour. Those of you tomorrow. that stayed, thank you. Yeah. All right. Please call the roll. Mr. Bartz? Yes. Mr. King? Yes. Mrs. Fiesel? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes, we are adjourned. Thank you.